Right now, as families in Puzzuoli sleep, the ground beneath them is convulsing. 31 earthquakes tore through the night in a violent burst that lasted just over an hour. The strongest reached magnitude 3.3, broadcast live on television as fans celebrated a football victory, their cheers dissolving into the rumble of a caldera that refuses to sleep. This is not the first swarm. It will not be the last. Over half a million people live directly above Campi Flagre, an eight-mile-wide scar in the earth west of Naples. The caldera formed when eruptions so massive they reshaped Europe's climate, emptied underground reservoirs, and collapsed the land. What remains is not a mountain, but a sprawling crater filled with neighborhoods, harders, and ancient ruins. The volcano never stopped breathing. It simply waited. What is driving these escalating tremors? Why is the ground rising faster than at any time in 40 years? And why can no one say with certainty what comes next? The swarm began at 11.09 p.m. local time on November 25, 2025. Within 62 minutes, seismographs across the region recorded 31 distinct earthquakes, all radiating from the Solfatara crater, the caldera's most restless wound. The National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology confirmed the epicenter at just 2.7 kilometers beneath the surface, shallow enough that the shaking rippled through apartment foundations and rattled windows across Puzzuoli, Bacoli, and northern Naples. Magnitude 3.3 is not catastrophic by itself, but context transforms numbers into warnings. The largest tremor struck at 11.21 p.m., interrupting a live sports broadcast. Commentators fell silent mid-sentence as the studio camera shook. Viewers watching at home felt the same jolt beneath their feet. Social media flooded with videos of swinging chandeliers and toppled picture frames. By dawn, the Vesuvius Observatory had declared the swarm concluded, but the unease lingered. Residents know these episodes cluster. They know the intervals between swarms are shrinking. They know the ground has risen 148 centimeters since 2005, with nearly 30 centimeters added in 2024 alone. This was not an isolated event. It was the latest pulse in a crisis that began decades ago and now accelerates with every passing month. Campi Flagre is not the volcano most people imagine. There is no towering cone, no smoking summit to mark its presence. Instead, the caldera sprawls beneath the western suburbs of Naples, its boundaries hidden beneath roads, schools, and ancient Roman temples. The land looks deceptively ordinary. Only the persistent smell of sulfur, the scorched earth around fumaroles, and the occasional tremor hint at the forces churning below. The caldera's formation dates to two catastrophic eruptions. The first, 39,000 years ago, ejected 200 cubic kilometers of magma and ash, covering the Mediterranean in a blanket that altered the climate across continents. The second, 15,000 years ago, produced the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff, a layer of volcanic rock still visible in quarries and coastal cliffs. Both events were VEI-7 eruptions, powerful enough to collapse the ground above the emptied magma chambers. But the violence did not end there. Since the caldera formed, at least 70 smaller eruptions have pierced its floor, each one opening new vents or building new hills. The most recent occurred in 1538, when Monte Nuovo rose from farmland in a matter of days, terrifying villagers who watched the earth split open and eject ash high into the sky. Parish records describe darkness at noon and crops failing across southern Italy. The eruption lasted only a few days, but it left a permanent scar, a cone that still stands as a reminder of the caldera's reach. Today, the threat is not dormancy. It is restlessness. Scientists describe the current unrest as bradycism, a phenomenon unique to certain volcanic systems. The ground does not simply tremble and settle. It lifts and falls in slow, powerful cycles that can lift the land by meters over months or years, then drop it just as quickly. Ancient Roman columns near Puzzuoli's harbor tell the story in stone. Mollusks once clung to their bases underwater. Today, those fossils sit high above the sea, evidence of uplift that occurred over centuries. The mechanism driving Brady Sizem remained uncertain for decades. Early models assumed magma was the primary culprit, surging upward and inflating the shallow crust like a balloon. But recent research has revealed a more complex picture. 
In 2025, a team from Stanford University and the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology published findings that challenged the magma-centric view. Their work shows that earthquakes at Campi Flagre follow an unusual pattern. They begin shallow, then deepen over time. This is the opposite of what magma-driven seismicity produces. Instead, the data point to a pressurized geothermal reservoir trapped beneath a fibrous cap rock at depths of 2 to 4 kilometers. The cap rock acts as a lid, sealing fluids and steam below. As pressure builds, the rocks fracture. Water flashes to steam. The ground shakes. Then, when the lid breaks, fluids discharge, pressure drops, and the land sinks slightly. This cycle explains both the uplift and the subsidence that follows major swarms. The discovery does not eliminate magma from the equation. Deeper imaging reveals a mush zone at 8 to 20 kilometers depth, a semi-molten reservoir containing roughly 10% melt. This deep source feeds the system, supplying heat and volatiles that percolate upward through fractured rock. But the immediate driver of the tremors is not rising magma. It is water, steam, and carbon dioxide trapped under immense pressure. The implications are profound. If the unrest is primarily hydrothermal, it may be possible to manage the pressure. Researchers have proposed drilling to release steam gradually, reducing the risk of sudden ruptures. The idea is controversial. Some warn that drilling could destabilize the system further. Others argue that doing nothing guarantees more violent episodes. For now, no decision has been made. Brady Sizem is relentless. Since 2005, the caldera has risen almost continuously, with brief pauses and occasional drops. The rate of uplift fluctuates. In 2023, the average was 1 cm per month. By mid-2024, it accelerated to 2 cm per month. In recent months, the rate reached 3 cm per month at the point of maximum deformation near Pozzuoli's historic district. The ground is not rising evenly. The deformation forms a dome, centered roughly over the Solfatara crater. Buildings near the center experience the greatest stress. Cracks spider across walls. Doors no longer close properly. Floors tilt just enough to make residents dizzy. In some neighborhoods, the cumulative uplift has rendered homes uninhabitable. Windows no longer fit their frames. Foundations separate from the earth beneath them. But this was only the first warning. Seismicity tracks closely with deformation. In 2023, the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology recorded over 6,000 earthquakes. In 2024, the count climbed to 6,745 events. Most were below magnitude 1, felt by no one. But the number of stronger quakes has grown. The March 13, 2025 earthquake registered magnitude 4.4, awakening thousands. The June 30th event reached magnitude 4.6, the strongest recorded in over 40 years. Both caused damage, both forced evacuations. The pattern is clear. The swarms are becoming more frequent. The magnitudes are climbing. The intervals of quiet are shrinking. And the signs were already spreading. New research published in February 2025 identified burst-like swarms as a defining feature of the unrest. These are not typical earthquake sequences. Instead of a single large shock followed by aftershocks, the events cluster in rapid succession, sometimes just seconds apart. Seismograms show overlapping waveforms, making it difficult to distinguish individual quakes. Between 2021 and 2024, the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology detected approximately 18,500 earthquakes using standard methods. Artificial intelligence analysis revealed thousands more previously hidden in the noise. The swarms correlate with spikes in ground deformation and gas emissions. At the Pisciarelli Fumarola, temperatures have climbed to 128 degrees Celsius, the highest ever recorded. Carbon dioxide output has surged past 4,000 tons per day, more than double the levels measured in 2018. The gas is not purely volcanic. Geochemical studies show that 20 to 40 percent comes from the breakdown of carbonate minerals in the shallow crust, heated by rising fluids. This distinction matters. 
A spike in carbon dioxide does not automatically mean magma is surging toward the surface. Sometimes it simply means the hydrothermal system is getting hotter. What came next shocked even the scientists. On Via Antonana, Maria Mascolo wakes each morning and checks the walls of her apartment. Some days the mineral crust has crept another inch up from the floorboards, leaving a yellow residue that crumbles underfoot. The air smells sharp and metallic, especially after rain, when gases push harder through cracks in the foundation. If you put your hand on the wall, it isn't warm. It's terribly hot, she says, her voice tight. Last winter, repairs cost over 6,000 euros. Heat-resistant paint, makeshift ventilation, repeated sealing of fissures that always reopen. Insurance companies refuse coverage, citing volcano exclusion closets. Selling is not an option. Property values have collapsed. Few buyers will risk a home in the shadow of Solfatara. The Moscolo family is not alone. Across Pozzuoli, residents face the same calculus. Stay and endure the damage, or leave and forfeit decades of investment. Some have fled. Others, like Maria's grandfather, insist on remaining. We watch from the balcony as steam curls up in the street, she says, and every morning we check if the paint is blistering. But the ground had one more secret. Civil protection agencies now confront a crisis that outpaces their resources. Monitoring stations around Solfatara went offline repeatedly in 2024, leaving critical data gaps during periods of rapid change. Budget shortfalls delayed repairs. Technicians warned that every extra week without coverage is a gamble. Meanwhile, the earthquakes continue their destructive work. On October 12, 2024, a swarm cracked open the main artery of Via Napoli. Shops closed, schools evacuated, emergency crews cordoned off gas zones and set up temporary shelters. Repairs are futile. Workers patch roads only to watch new fumaroles burst through the asphalt by morning. A shop owner summed up the frustration. It was as if the earth decided our repairs were pointless. The limits of authority are stark. City budgets are drained. Infrastructure crumbles faster than it can be rebuilt. Officials quietly admit they cannot stop the volcano, only manage it. In 2025, researchers used artificial intelligence to map thousands of microquakes previously undetected. These swarms cluster along a newly identified ring fault encircling the caldera. The fault could focus future earthquakes and amplify damage across a wider area. The acceleration is measured not just in data, but in broken streets and sleepless nights, and the worst may still be hidden. Scientists remain divided on what drives the unrest. Some argue that magma is the root cause, citing evidence of melt at shallow depths and the recent increase in seismicity. Others point to the geothermal reservoir and caprock system, emphasizing the hydrothermal nature of the tremors. Both groups agree on one thing. The system is primed. Whether the next major event will be a steam explosion, a larger earthquake, or an actual eruption remains unknown. The Italian government maintains a yellow alert level for volcanic risk. This designation acknowledges heightened activity, but stops short of calling for mass evacuations. Plans exist to move over half a million people from the red zone if conditions deteriorate, but the logistics are daunting. Roads are few. Traffic in the Naples metro area is notoriously congested. Evacuating hundreds of thousands of people in a matter of hours may not be possible. Giovanni Macedonio, director of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology in Naples, oversees monitoring from an observatory where a red phone connects directly to civil protection headquarters in Rome. The line is tested twice daily. Two of the most recent earthquakes are the strongest we've ever seen, he said in a recent interview. There really are no countermeasures to protect yourself from a pyroclastic flow which could reach speeds of 30 to 60 miles per hour and temperatures above 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. The uncertainty extends beyond eruption risk. Even without magma reaching the surface, the caldera poses significant hazards, 
Phreatic explosions, driven by superheated water and steam, can devastate neighborhoods. Large earthquakes can collapse buildings and sever lifelines. Ground deformation can render entire districts uninhabitable. All of these threats are immediate. All are poorly constrained by current models. This is the challenge. Scientists can measure what is happening. They can track uplift, count earthquakes, and sample gases. They can image the subsurface with seismic tomography and magnetotellurics, but they cannot predict when the system will cross a threshold. They cannot say whether the next swarm will be the last before an eruption or just another in an endless series of false alarms. The recent intensification offers no clarity. The March and June 2025 earthquakes were the strongest in modern records. The uplift rate has tripled in less than two years. Gas emissions are at historic highs. Yet there is no definitive sign that magma is ascending toward the surface. Low-frequency earthquakes, which typically signal magma movement, remain absent. Ground deformation patterns do not match those expected from a shallow intrusion. Some researchers interpret this as good news. If the unrest is primarily hydrothermal, the risk of a large eruption may be lower than feared. Others caution that the system is complex and nonlinear. Small changes at depth could trigger rapid escalation at the surface. The absence of clear precursors make forecasting impossible. What is certain is that Campy for Grey will not return to sleep. The caldera has been in a state of unrest since 2005, with no end in sight. Each swarm, each uplift cycle, each spike in gas emissions adds stress to a system already stretched to its limits. The question is not whether another event will occur, but when and how severe it will be. The 31 earthquakes that rattled Putsuoli overnight are now part of a growing archive. They join thousands of previous tremors, each one a data point in a record that scientists study for patterns. The swarm ended, but the conditions that produced it remain. The cap rock still seals the reservoir. The pressure still builds. The ground still rises. For the residents of Campi for Grey, the volcano is not an abstract threat. It is a presence that shapes daily life. They live with the smell of sulfur, the tremor of the floor, the uncertainty of whether tonight will bring another swarm. They adapt because they have no choice. But adaptation has limits. The next swarm could be stronger. The next uplift cycle could push the ground higher than ever before. The next phreatic explosion could occur without warning in a crowded neighborhood. Scientists know these possibilities exist, they know the system is capable of sudden violent change. They simply do not know when. What we know is documented. The caldera has risen 148 centimeters since 2005. Seismicity has climbed from fewer than 1,000 events per year to over 6,000. The strongest earthquakes in 40 years occurred in 2025. Gas emissions have doubled. Fumarole temperatures have reached record highs. A pressurized geothermal reservoir sits at shallow depth, sealed beneath fractured rock that could rupture at any moment. What remains unknown is equally clear. We do not know whether magma will ascend to eruptible depths. We do not know if the cap rock can withstand further pressure buildup. We do not know how many more swarms the infrastructure can endure before widespread collapse. We do not know if the system will escalate gradually giving time for evacuation, or shift abruptly from unrest to crisis. The 31 earthquakes that shook Putsuoli overnight are not the end of the story. They are a reminder that Campi for Grey remains one of the most dangerous volcanic systems on Earth, a supervolcano that refuses to be ignored beneath a city that cannot afford to leave. The question is no longer if the caldera will act again. It is what form that action will take and whether science will recognize the warning signs in time.